This is KGW News at Noon. Good afternoon to you. I'm Nina Melhoff. We start with our top story. Police Chief Danielle Outlaw leaving Portland and heading to Philadelphia where she has accepted a job. You are taking a live look at a press conference in Philly that's about to start introducing Outlaw as the city's new police commissioner. Her last day is as Portland's chief is tomorrow. Portland Deputy Chief Jamie Resch, with 20 years in the Bureau, will be sworn in tomorrow afternoon as the next police chief. Outlaw led the force here for only two years. Portland has just around 1,000 officers. Philadelphia is six times bigger at 6,300 sworn officers. It is the fourth largest police department in the country. Our Brenda Braxton sat down with her last month in a KGW carpool interview. And then she said her contract was up and she didn't know if it would be renewed. So she hadn't made any decisions for her future at that point. No, I mean, I, I'm at some point going to have to start thinking about it. But I'm, again, I'm not burnt out. Um, I'm not, you know, out there interviewing. Yes, people call me, but it really depends on what, what I want my next step to be. And now we know she is leaving for Philadelphia. We mentioned that press conference. If you would like to watch that live, we are streaming it on all of our platforms. You can watch the full KGW carpool interview on, dot, on our website and our YouTube page. Meanwhile, this tweet from Mayor Ted Wheeler. He congratulates Outlaw on the job and says, quote, we can't thank you enough for the work you carried out to build community trust and confidence in Portland police. Philly is lucky to have you. We wish you all the best. We will be following today's press conference in Philadelphia. As I mentioned, you can stream it live on our social pages right now. We'll have more tonight, and you can find any updates on KGW.com. All right, now let's take a peek outside. Keely Chalmers in this afternoon for Rod Hill. And hey, the headline is it's not raining. Yeah, it's dry today. Things are going to be changing tomorrow, however. But yeah, let's talk about today. Fog, that's the big story out on the coast, at least in Astoria, where we have certainly foggy conditions, limited visibility. We're at 46 in Astoria. Out in Dayton at the Stoller Vineyard, 44 right now. And here in the metro area, we're at 45 degrees. Starting to get a little bit of breaks in the cloud, but we're expecting mostly cloudy skies for much of the uh, of the day. So again, we have these clouds moving in. No precipitation, at least not today. We're at uh, again, the mid 40s right now. We're going to warm up into uh, not much more than about 46 degrees, cooling back down about 44 by 5 o'clock tonight. And again, tomorrow, that's when we see the first of a series of systems moving into our area, making for a very wet, showery week ahead. We'll talk about when the the first raindrops will likely fall tomorrow and your New Year's Eve forecast outlook coming up in your full forecast. All right, Keely. Keely, thank you. We'll see you soon. It was breaking news all morning here on Sunrise, and now we know over 50 bullets were fired in Portland's Old Town District. Two people were shot. Police say that suspect has been arrested. Officers started investigating on Northwest Flanders and Broadway at about four this morning. We know one of those victims was found just after police took the suspect into custody. They have serious injuries. The second person that was shot went to the hospital on their own. We don't know their condition. We will keep you updated as to the motive in all of this as we learn more. There is a hearing today for Jeremy Christian. He's the man accused of killing two strangers on a MAX train in 2017. Prosecutors want jurors to be able to walk through that MAX train car where the attack happened. They also want them to see video of a threatening rant by Christian recorded the day before those stabbings. The defense is fighting against that motion. Christian's trial is scheduled to start in January. It was a tough decision. Washington County Sheriff's deputies have stopped looking in the woods for a missing woman near North Plains. Deputies are now focusing on trying to piece together what happened before she went missing. 20 year old Allison Watterson went missing just a few days before Christmas. Crews spent five days looking in the woods outside North Plains, covering 1600 acres. It's where Allison was last seen with her boyfriend, Benjamin Garland. Allison's mom says the couple was visiting a friend when their car broke down and when they tried to get help, they somehow got separated. Well, Benjamin was arrested on outstanding warrants not related to her disappearance 
And while the active search is over for now, Allison's family says they are not giving up hope. Even though they're not actively searching, we will always search. Allison, I will never stop looking for you. <laughs> never. I'll never stop. And I would like to ask everybody else to not stop looking either. She's a very special girl and she deserves to be looked for. The Washington County Sheriff's Office is still looking for tips about Allison's disappearance. The 24 hour tip line right there on your screen, 503-846-2700. In national news, New York's governor is describing a violent attack at a rabbi's home as an act of domestic terrorism. Saturday night, five people were stabbed at the home during a Hanukkah celebration. Everyone survived. One person is in critical condition. That suspect is pleading not guilty to many charges of attempted murder. His bail now set at $5 million. The incident caps a week of anti-Semitic attacks throughout New York. Police have responded to at least six where Jewish people have been targeted. We cannot let that be the new normal. We will not let that be the new normal in this city. Earlier this month in Jersey City, three people died in a shooting rampage at a kosher grocery store. New York police are now deploying more officers to Jewish houses of worship, and they're warning people to stay on alert. Atlanta Congressman John Lewis will soon start treatment for stage four pancreatic cancer. The 79-year-old civil rights pioneer learned his diagnosis this month during a routine doctor's visit. Lewis says he will return to Capitol Hill in the coming days. He might miss a few votes, but hopes to be on the front line soon. He didn't specify when treatment will start. The dreaded flu season is here. I think it's hit our household and the number of cases is rising quickly. Brittany Falker shows us how the virus is impacting us in the Northwest. Sniffling, sneezing, everyone calling out sick from work. You know what I'm talking about, right? The cough, raw nose, and there just never seems to be enough tissues. It's flu season and it's hitting Oregon hard. There have been 11 outbreaks in the past week alone. That's a nearly 400% increase from the week before, and it's been deadly too. Oregon health officials say one child died from the virus earlier this month. So how bad has the flu season been this year compared to the past couple of years? Well, it's actually been pretty similar, but unfortunately, the past couple of years have been pretty bad for the virus. Now, nationally, Oregon is one of the states with the most cases, and according to the CDC, it's the only western state besides Washington reporting high levels of flu activity. Now it's not too late to get that flu shot and health officials say it's really important to do so if you haven't already. This year's flu shot is supposed to protect you against the strain that's landed quite a few people in the hospital. It's quick and it's easy. Just go to vaccinefinder.org, put in your zip code and it's gonna bring up a whole list of places where you can go to get your flu shot. Good information. Okay, on to sports now. The 106th edition of the Rose Bowl is this Wednesday with Oregon facing Wisconsin on New Year's Day. The Ducks have arrived in Pasadena. They actually got into practice over the weekend. Our Orlando Sanchez is there too, and he got a chance to talk with the players this morning. It's just surreal to be at the Rose Bowl and be at the granddaddy of mom, and we're taking every every event that they give us um, with a smile on our face and enjoying the moments, but at the same time with the understanding it's a business trip. And uh, we're taking that as such. I mean, every practice we have has been a uh, good tempo, good energy. Guys are out there flying around doing what you do. Uh, now we're getting into the, the more mindset type of practices and meetings and stuff like that to polish up on what we've done. It's a business trip. I like that. Kickoff is at 2 o'clock on New Year's Day. 